to talk a little bit about batteries. Um, batteries that are used in some Apple products, uh, specifically the Macintosh product line. To narrow it down even further, we're talking about the original Macintosh product line from Mac 128 to the Mac Plus. And um, for those of you who own machines that are newer than the Mac Plus, um, well, newer than the SE, I'm really specifically talking about the Classic series, the LC series, um, even up to the new, um, the newest version of the CRT iMac. And I'm going to include the eMac as well. Those machines use a battery that is very easy to obtain. They still sell them at Radio Shack, and they also sell them at the two major battery stores, Batteries Plus and Interstate Batteries in the U.S. Um, in Canada, you might be able to find them at Tim Horton's Battery Store. Um, I don't know if Canada has such a thing. I'm just making that up because I know Canadians love hockey and they love Tim Hortons. And um, may God be with you. Uh, so, the original Compact Max use what is called the EverReady number 523. It is a 4.5 volt alkaline battery meaning it's not full of acid, it's full of alkaline. No, al uh, it's full of a, a very alkalinic or um, high pH substance, making it alkaline. Okay, whoops. Um, so anyway, yeah, if you happen to need one of these batteries, they are unobtainium. They don't make them anymore because the only machines that really used these were the Apple Macintoshes, and I, they may have been used in an industrial application or in the um, electronic instrument field, uh, test equipment perhaps, but the point being, you can't buy these at Walmart, you can't buy these at Interstate, you can't buy these at Batteries Plus, and you certainly can't buy these at Radio Shack, because there isn't a market for them anymore. Now the um, solution for you is actually a little more interesting than I thought. I went on eBay to try to find maybe a new old stock battery. If it still had a charge and wasn't leaking um, any substance, then I was going to use it. I should warn you though, if you have a battery that is leaking anything, if there's any green, green or white chalky residue on either end of the battery or in the battery box itself, you have to remove it. Um, otherwise, eventually it will eat right into the contacts of the battery box. Luckily, that hasn't happened here. This battery box is clean as a whistle. No residue, no leakage. And it's good, because the battery that I pulled out of this machine happened to be this one. As you can clearly see, the case is starting to split, and that means the battery is well on its way to total, total self-destruction. And once that occurs, it's all over, Jack. You've either got to pull the battery out, or you're going to risk ruining your battery box. And if you think these are hard to find, try finding a battery box. Um, actually, I'm kind of half right on that one. You can still buy the battery boxes by buying a used, um, I believe they are soldered directly to the analog board. If you're missing a battery door, well, that just sucks. Now, you can go on eBay, and you can buy this battery, and I did just that. I didn't realize how out of production these were until I got the battery today. And here it is. This is my new battery. It came in a nice shiny package, and believe it or not, shipped from the U.S. I couldn't believe it. Let's take a look at what I got. There it is. Now, this is not a genuine 523 alkaline battery. This is not, I repeat, this is not the real article. It is, um, it is actually a cleverly built battery. It contains several LR50s that have been stacked in a cardboard tube and then covered with a shrink tube-like uh, material a shrink wrapping material, and printed. <laughs> it's, 
it's clever and it works but it just goes to show that sometimes you have to be really creative to get these things to you know to keep machines like this running uh, in their original condition in that case having a running clock um, this battery replaces the 523, the PX21, the EN133A, the PC133A, and it cost me over $11 shipped. Um, I could have built this myself had I thought of it, uh, but you can clearly see there is a paper tube in there, and uh, you can see the, the lines from the roll form go through there. Um, I don't actually know how many cells are in here. I can't, I don't have a visual on one complete cell, so I can't figure that part out. Um, but I assume there's just enough cells to make the four and a half volts. And um, the, I believe, let's see, an LR50, that's like a 1.5 volt button cell, if I recall. And uh, it's used in a variety of things. I'd like to dissect this battery to see exactly how they did this. I'm sure there's like maybe two or three sets of batteries in here that are wired in um, in parallel to provide the amperage and longevity but um, I can't really tell without pulling the battery apart I can only assume but this is what your replacement is going to look like and while these still exist if you do get one of these and it dies I would recommend pulling it apart and um, that way you can start making your own batteries but size-wise, it is uh, it's exactly the same size. No, a little shorter, believe it or not. Actually, a little bit shorter. And um, thickness, uh, let's see. How does it compare side by side? It's a little bit thicker. Just a, just a hair thicker. So this is a homebrew version of a 523. But since you can't buy the 523s anymore, you're stuck with this. So let's pop this sucker back in, and uh, it is positive down, and this is the positive terminal. Like It's a button cell, so the positive terminal is actually the battery case itself. And uh, we're going to just throw that back in there, put the door back on. Okay, let's see if we can uh, set the time and see if it stays. I'm going to discard those batteries. Unfortunately, they are dead. And um, Another little trick for you guys who own these and you're not really that familiar with CRTs. Some people aren't. I mean, hey, you know. Anyone born in 1998, for example, has lived most of his or her life in an LCD world. So, <laughs> It's a good idea to um, lower the brightness as much as possible to avoid burn-in. Um, again, I know I mentioned this in the previous video about this machine, but um, I wanted to mention it again. You want to avoid burning, and you don't want to stress the circuitry any more than you have to. So we're going to go ahead and set the clock. If you didn't see my previous video, this is Mac OS 1. And this is what the control panel looks like. In fact, we're running Finder version 1.1. So this is what it looks like, for those of you who haven't seen it. We'll use uh, my, my little watch here to get the correct time. And the current date is 9-6. So we're going to put 0 9. Oh, don't have to put it to 0. 6. Now, this is not Y2K compliant. It's a two-digit year. But if we set it to 1913, 1913, we will get the correct calendar data. It lines up perfectly. And the current time is 6.49. We're going to call it 7 o'clock. But it's military time. So... 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. It is 1,900 hours. Oops. I used to hate military time. When I was in the military, I, I hated it. But 
No worry, it was a short military career. Only three months until I effed up my ankle on the track in the Air Force. That was not fun. And basic training, so they sent me home. But I had to get used to military time, and it sucked. All right, we set our clock. We're going to hit the return key. It is now going to start ticking away. Bada boom. And we're going to shut it down. Um, because there is no shutdown command in OS 1, um, all we're going to do is flick off the power switch, like so. We're going to count to three Mississippis, or three Albuquerques. One Albuquerque, two Albuquerque, three Albuquerque. I love Breaking Bad. It's a great show, don't you? All right, now we're going to turn it back on and see if the time and date have stayed the same. So here we go. But like I said, if you have a Macintosh that was manufactured, in, well not a desktop, but a, a desktop, I'm sorry, that was manufactured between 1990 and about 2005, the eMac was discontinued sometime in 05 or 06. But if that's the case, you actually can use a... Um, can't think of the actual battery name, but they're it's little six volt batteries. They're not camera batteries, but they are readily available, and they're not expensive. So, and they last a long time. So we're going to do an open the alarm clock here, and we're going to see. Yep, 7:01 p.m. Got it right. I wonder how the alarm clock works. Um, we're going to set it to seven. Oh, 3 p.m. And uh, let's see, let's turn that on. So here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to blabber on for about 59 seconds, 50 seconds, whatever. And uh, we're going to see if the alarm ever goes off. Let's see what it does. Could be fun, right? Let's change the the desktop background. I don't like this laced background. It looks kind of lacy, and um, nobody likes that, right? I'm gonna go with the basic gray back. Oh, that's 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 much easier on the eyes on this screen. So we've got another 20 seconds to go. Um, what can we talk about? I just want to see how the alarm clock sounds. I think it just uses the system chime since OS 1 didn't have multiple sounds to choose from, which is kind of cool, uh, or not. Eight, nine, hey, the, where's my alarm? 7.03 p.m., there's no alarm. Are you kidding me? Oh, maybe that silences it. No, it doesn't. No, what the hell? It didn't go off. Are you kidding me? 7.03 a.m. What? Really? 4 p.m. I'm sorry, 7.04 p.m. What the hell? Put that aside. It didn't go off. It's supposed to. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. There it goes. But it chimes once. That's no good. It's no good at all. Are there any preferences? No. You suck. I don't like that one bit. It's done going off. Turn that off. Anyway. What else can we do here? Let's play the puzzle. It should be a numeric slide puzzle. Yep, it is. I hate those. 
We're done. Okay, so now you've learned nothing. You're welcome. Congratulations. You're a winner.